दृष्टि से बहुत कृष्णगत रोग विज्ञान अर्थात कृष्णगत रोग विज्ञानी व्याख्या से महत्वी यथम शुक्र अशुक्र अथ अवरण वाकाेय अजगात चार ये अभिधानकार कृष्णाश्रया संग्रह पुरस्ता इन द कृष्णगत दट्स इन दि स्क्री ब्लैक पोर्शन ऑफ द स्क्रीन दट्स कॉर्नियल पोर्शन दि डिजीजस् विच आर मेन्शन आर मेनली फोर टेक्स सवरण शुक्ल अवरण शुक्ल एंड पाकाेय अजगा जाता आर दि मेन कंडीशन दैट नौ फ्रम दि शु व्रण सवरण एंड अवरण शुक्ल क्वैट ऑब्वियली दट्स वाट वी कॉल एस अ कॉर्नियल अलसर नौ द टर्म कॉर्नियल अलसर is used interchangeably with bacterial keratitis the other name for that is the bacterial keratitis although in practice these are two different entities now bacterial keratitis is not a bacterial infection of the eye that causes inflammation and potentially ulceration of the cornea whereas corneal ulcer describes a loss of corneal tissue due to many possible causes now this is a plain a basic difference otherwise all practical purposes bacterial keratitis and corneal ulcer they mean almost the same because almost every case of bacterial keratitis results in corneal ulcer there are a few other causes other than that of the bacterial keratitis for the corneal ulcer but once the ulcer occurs uh, there will be a bacterial sepsis and hence uh, these are almost synonymous but technically there is a primary difference when you say an ulcer there is a discontinuity whereas uh, when you say bacterial infection there is a bacterial infection as such causes are of course the primarily it may start with the, the bacterial infection due to the external contacts or tra uh, transmission of the bacteria or it can occur it can be triggered due to the underlying pathology systemic pathologies like rheumatoid pathology sjogren's disease sls scleroderma etc many of the systemic disorders can be caused for <coughs> the ulcers many of the autoimmune disorders they can manifest in the eyes in different manners there are many different conditions which are Uh, produced due to the <coughs> systemic pathology and one of them would be the corneal ulcer now corneal ulcers are quite common and one of the most common cause for the blindness and the corneal ulcers are staged in the uh, based upon their clinical presentation as a stage of progressive infiltration or stage of active ulceration or stage of regression in the later stage and the stage of cicatrization now that stage of cicatrization is the most critical stage where the patient would have an opacity that if there is see cornea transparency of the cornea is one of the important necessity for a proper vision the light should pass through then only the other systems which receive the light sensation can function now if the cornea becomes opaque then naturally the blindness would occur and the most serious complication of the corneal ulcer is the scar formation the cicatrization and that cicatrization will produce the blindness now grading of the ulcers also are done based upon the uh, script lamp observations and uh, the based upon that they are uh, categorized into type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 and that's a good, the <coughs> based the size and the appearance type 1 is micro whereas uh, Uh, okay now mm -hmm. type 1 is when there is a micro punctate ulcer type 2 is a micro macro punctate ulcer type 3 is a deep ulcer formation and type 4 is a that the cicatrization would occur so these are the uh, four grades now my purpose of referring to these grades and classification is uh, that's exactly what sushuda has uh, mentioned as uh, the sauran and avarna shukra and then there is uh, varieties now the definition of sauran shukra is uh, nimagna roopam hi bhavet krishne sutya iva vidham pratipatya dvai sravam sarve rustam ati varutya tat sarvanam sauranam shuklam udaharanti as i told you the it starts with the superficial ulceration over the area 
Many times these ulcers may not be directly visible to the eyes. Nimagna Rupam. It may not be easily visible to the eyes, but when you use a strip lamp, the ulcer becomes prominent. But in the later stages, when it goes to the stage of a macropunctate ulcer, bigger ulcer, then it can be seen with the naked eye. And it starts with the pricking sensation, pain, chutya eva vidham, and it produces discharges. Uh, often the corneal ulcer produces irritation and due to the irritation there will be continuous tear, uh, discharges of the tears as well as the conjunctiva palpebral as well as the scleral surface of the conjunctiva they, they may become inflamed so it may start with the inflammation and then you may have a scar formation whereas a slit lamp observation can identify the ulcer quite early in the slit plant in the normal situation you will not see an opacity but gradually as the ulcer progresses you may see that the initial uh, minor clouding like initially and then later it produces a, a significant opacity involving whole of the sclera and this helps in staging of the ulcers as such and that's exactly the point now as a result of that now, a feasibility or prognosis of a Savarana Shukla or a corneal ulcer is depending upon its location. If the location is very close to the pupil, and then it obstructs the eyes, uh, this vision easily. If it is away or it completely or significantly. Whereas if the location is away from the pupil, then these complications could be comparatively lesser. So if it is over the pupil, naturally the light or passing into the eyes will be seriously affected. If it is away from the pupil, the impact will be minimum. Now that's exactly the point which Sushila has mentioned. This stay in Samipe, if it is close to the drishti, that's the pupils, then it, it cannot be cured. It may produce more complications as such. Though if it is painful, even if it is painless, uh, sorry, even if it is painless, the prognosis would be poor. Whereas if it is away from the uh, that pupil, then the prognosis is uh, better. Then vichinna madhyam pishitavartam va chalam sirasaktam adhristi kritcha dhritvagadam lohitam antadashya sirotchitam chapi varjaniyam. Now the prognosis also is based upon the other factors like vichinna madhyam where there is a macro punctate ulcer. The present classification is exactly the same as Sushila has mentioned. Pishitavatam, when the surface is elevated, raised, and Sirasaktam, where there is a significant vascularity, these make the prognosis poor. Now, what we now consider in the current uh, uh, ophthalmology, we consider these as the three states or uh, three subtypes of the corneal ulcer. Uh, and Sushil has mentioned exactly the same, it's almost the same issue. Then Vitpangadam, when it is, becomes deeper, the depth of the ulcer is more, then too it can be producing a vivarginium, uh, it, cannot be, it cannot be cured. Then Lohita Mantrashta, if a ulcer produces a complication of hemorrhage into the anterior chamber, which also is a rare complication, that too it becomes a Incurable. So it is exactly the same thing which we discussed in the current ophthalmology, which is mentioned by Sushura as such. Then Ushnashvataha, Pedakaja Krishna, Esmin, Bhavet, Mudgani, Bhavita Shukram, Tadapya Sadhyam, Bhavadanti, Kechada, Anirchatitya, Titti, Pakshatulyam. The location of the uh, ulcer near the pupils, Krishna, in the black area, that is near the pupils, in the central portions of the iris. If it produces irrespective of its shape, like if it is bhavyat muggari if it is a small seed like, or if it is wider like a bird's wing. Now, we measure that in terms of the millimeters like, if it is a smaller one, then the prognosis is considered better, whereas if it is a bigger one, the prognosis is considered to be worse. But Sushil says, even if it is smaller, in, in if it is close to the vision, or if it is close to that pupil's area, then it can, uh, in the zone of the iris, then it can produce, a, uh, it can be incurable as such. Then that's about the Savarana Shukra. Avarana Shukra is uh, the next state. Now we consider that scar as a next state, whereas Sushura has considered Avarana Shukra as a separate condition. That's the basic difference in the approach. Like. 
सिदमी यदा भाति असित प्रदेश संध्यात्मक नाति रुगश्रुयुक्त विहाय से अच्छ घनाकारी तदवरण साध्य वदी नम सुश्रुद डिस्क्राइब्स दट और शुक्र और कॉर्निय स्कॉर्स डिफरेंस इन द अप्रोच इन करेन्ट सैंस वी कन्सिडर दिस एस ए कॉम्प्लिकेशन आफ ए कॉर्नियल अलसर वेर एस सुश्रुद हेड कन्सिडर दट एस ए डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ द पैथालजी दट आल द डिफरेंस Now, if uh, a whitish patch is seen over the uh, iris, and uh, it so should I compare it to a cloud over the sky? It looks like a cloud over the sky. Such a condition is aurora, and uh, it also is uh, not to be uh, cannot be cured easily. Gamphi rajatam bhalan chashukram chirot chapi vadam dikacham. If it is deep seated, and if it is white, and if it is quite. opaque or more whiter darker color and if it is chronic then it cannot be cured now of course in the present case situation also it is the same thing but in all the corneal opacity one of the uh, uh, measures by which the vision can be restored is only the corneal transplant and the corneal transplant has now become more popular safer and uh, comparatively better available because of the uh, social awareness about the eye donation and the the uh, banks and so on the technology has developed as well as the accessibility also has been increasing and hence the one of the uh, almost definite solution for this is uh, the transplant other than that there is no question of any remedy for uh, these corneal opacities as such then comes the other conditions sanchyate shweta nibhena sarvayam doshena yasya asida mandalam tu तम अक्षिपाकाम अक्षिकोपम अक्षिकोपम तीव्रुजी सिचुएशन वेर दि ऐरी पोर्शन दट ब्लैकिश पोर्शन ईज फील बै ए वैटिश फ्लूड श्वेत निभेन सको इफ दर ईज ए वैटिश फ्लूड प्रसेंट ओवर दट दट कॉल एस पाका The pacatia is uh, the exactly what we call as the endophthalmitis or hypopian. The other name is a hypopian. Endophthalmitis is uh, exactly a collection of fluid containing white blood cells, and it can be seen as a fluid level. So either it could be relatively small or a huge one, which is a sign of infective complication. And uh, endophthalmitis can occur as a complication of any of the eye diseases. But more frequently, it's a complication which can occur after the surgery. Any handling of the eyes, one of the serious complications which can affect the outcome of any surgery in the eye is a hypopia or end of thermitis, and uh, that, that uh, may be you no know, uh, due to the unhygienic conditions during the surgery it occurs, or it can occur also as a consequence of any of the infective disorders that hypopia can occur. and one of the quite troublesome conditions if you see then comes the uh, conditions ajaka jata ajaka jata ajapurisha pratimaha gujavan salohita lohita pichilashru viraja krishnam prachayo abhipaiti tamcha ajaka jatam iti vyavasyet ajaka jata is a situation where the whole sclera looks like um, the a mass of pieces of the goat that's a blackish and elevated area would be seen and it also would be having bit reddish discoloration in between and that also produces a, a hemorrhagic discharges like uh, the tear which could be hemorrhaginous like and it results in rupture or damage to the krishna that is the iris portion and that's called as ajaka jata now it is exactly the presentation of staphyloma or sclerosis Scleromalacia is uh, one of the degenerative disorder. Again, very commonly seen in patients with autoimmune pathologies. Most of the autoimmune disease conditions can result in. It can present with the the damage to the conjunctival surface. The normal smooth epithelium of the conjunctiva would be replaced by a fibrous tissue, connective tissue, and at the same time there will be some vascularity due to the inflammation. Autoimmune disorder producing that collagen tissue will become destroyed. and it starts exactly in the same manner either it could be a black localized mass like appearance with the high vascularity or there could be scattered line like appearances which again can affect the vision the most important uh, consequence would be acuity of the vision would be affected in that condition and one of the troublesome but comparatively less common it's not a very common condition 
unlike that of the corneal ulcers this is a less common condition and uh, it can remain a uh, painless or asymptomatic for quite a long time that's ajaka jata now with, with this the krishna katha roga is uh, completed uh, so we will go into the next bill the next is about the sarvagata roga in the sarvagata roga again the diseases are chandas chatvara hai iha putishtah tavanta eva iha tatha adhimantah shofan vito ashopaitash pako itya mete dash sampradishtah hata adhimantho anila pariyashcha shushka akshipako anyata eva vatah drishti studa amulaadhushrah sirana utpata harsha vapi sarvabhagah Uh, four types of the abhishanda then uh, adhimanta then uh, shupa, uh, akshipaka either sashopa or ashopa akshipaka these are the ten conditions along with that hatha adhimanta hatha adhimanta uh, abhata vipariya shushka akshipaka and anyato vata and amla dhushita dhushti sira utpata is also are the conditions which are considered as a sarvagata which involves the whole of the aiba of course for the present today we will discuss only the abhishan that not more that that the, the next part we will cut uh, into the next cut, uh, session prayana sarve nayanamayastu bhavanti abhishan nimittam mulaha tama tasmat abhishan mudiremanam upachare tashu shitaya dhiman the majority of the diseases are produced due to the inflammation in the conjunctiva conjunctiva is one of the critical part of the uh, eye which is absolutely essential for the function at the most again it's also exposed to the exterior quite frequently and hence it can get affected quite easily and very commonly and all that conditions where the conjunctiva becomes inflamed is called as conjunctivitis and this conjunctivitis is a very popular name almost everyone knows that but primarily conjunctivitis is of different varieties either it could be viral conjunctivitis Uh, which also is often named as epidemic keratoconjunctivitis there is a primary basic difference between these two which are common which we often say as madras eye or pink eye and so on which often occurs as well, the seasonal epidemic conditions along with that the other types of the conjunctivitis which are uh, common are allergic conjunctivitis acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis bacterial conjunctivitis giant papillary conjunctivitis neonatal conjunctivitis in the newborn and uh, that same viral conjunctivitis of course there is repetition of uh, in the typing uh, then uh, um, keratoconjunctivitis sicca or superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis these are the types of uh, uh, the different types of the conjunctivitis which we see we will refer to only a few of the common varieties relatively less common varieties we will just skip up now among them one of them is the vatajak abhishanda and the vatajak abhishanda clinical features are nistodanam स्तंभन रोमहर्ष संहर्ष पारुष्य शिरो अभितापाह विशुष्क भाव शिश्रा शुता च वाताभिपन्ये नयने भवन्ति दि इन केस ऑफ दि वातज वैरायटी ऑफ द विषन द द पेशेंट वुड हैव ए नमनेस टिंगलिंग सेंसेशन एंड सो ऑन एंड देयर वुड बी रफनेस एट द एरिया द एरिया वुड बी लुकिंग रफ आईज एज वेल एज दि पल्पेट ग्रे दे लुक रफ एंड देयर इज अ फीलिंग ऑफ ड्रेनेस and uh, the tears would be smaller in quantities lesser tears are seen that's called as a, the vatraja abhishan and that's exactly the feature which we see in case of atopic keratoconjunctivitis now atopic atopic keratoconjunctivitis is more commonly seen in patients with the atopy elsewhere in the body due to allergies asthma rhinitis atopic dermatitis eczema etc and the characteristic feature would be chronic and recurrent symptoms of itching tick discharges photophobia hypertrophy of the lids characteristically the lids would become hypertrophied and the shape also become altered and that itself would be more uh, producing uh, or triggering these complications as a result of both these the inflammation the atopy as well as the uh, abnormalities of the uh, eye lids the cornea becomes inflamed and the cornea becomes exposed to the exterior and hence it becomes a hazy cornea incidence of the cataract in patients of atopic uh, conjunctivitis also is uh, quite high 
so and quite early stages the cataract could occur so there would be two double pathologies mm -hmm. a corneal opacity as well as a cataract which affects the vision in case of atopic keratoconjunctivitis uh, and uh, primary pathology is uh, the allergy or the systemic factors like which trigger these uh, conditions that's what we see compared to the what we call as the epidemic conjunctivitis this number is lesser then comes the pittaja variety <coughs> of the conjunctivitis pitta pittaja variety of the vision daha prabhaka shishra bhinanda dhumayanam bhashpa samchaycha usnashuta pitta conjunctivitis pitta bhinne nayane bhavanti this is what we call as the viral conjunctivitis or epidemic keratoconjunctivitis which is often seen as seasonal very often seen in summer and easily transmittable it gets transmitted to uh, the others quite easily and uh, the most of the times it is self limiting now that a, a viral simple what we call as a pink eye the madras eye or pink eye and epidemic character conjunctivitis the differences are very minimal and mainly the difference is based upon the serotypes of the virus which is produced now usually some adenovirus adenovirus uh, uh, species produce these viral conjunctivitis uh, and uh, the serotypes of 5 8 11 13 9 10 37 they produce keratoconjunctivitis the difference between these two is uh, the common simple uh, viral conjunctivitis is a uh, usually self limiting and most of the times it recurs easily without much of complications after around 5 to 7 days but during that episode the onset would be almost quick within 2 to 3 days the incubation period is shorter and it presents with the inflammatory changes in the conjunctiva then uh, that feeling of uh, uh, irritation in the conjunctiva discharges watery discharges uh, the redness also would occur and the photophobia Uh, the vision would be affected and comparatively the inflammation is a uh, more seen in the uh, scleral surface of the conjunctiva than the palpebral surface whereas keratoconjunctivitis it has a longer incubation period the recovery period also is longer it can last for about 3 to 4 weeks even when it recovers completely there could be some still residual lesions some more left over can affect the limbus and there could be a continuous limbus discharges or the secondary complications like a bacterial conjunctivitis also can be more in case of the keratoconjunctivitis differences in the beginning in the clinical conditions would be would not be possible but what happens is that certain of the epidemics certain epidemics they you will see more of these serotypes which produce the keratoconjunctivitis whereas certain epidemics it will be the plain adenovirus which doesn't produce a keratoconjunctivitis the recent episode of conjunctivitis in our area which had been quite prominent in last uh, this rainy season july august season and majority of the people in our campus also had the conjunctivitis this season it was a keratoconjunctivitis the duration of the suffering was longer and the majority of the people had a persistent swelling in the limbus for quite a long period for about 2 to 3 months so that's all the basic difference otherwise these are the same that's exactly the features which you see in case of pittaja abhishan uh, as such so should i had considered it as a pittaja abhishan then comes the kapha abhishan usna bhinanda guruta akshishopah कंडूपदेहो सिचता अतिशैत्यम श्रावो मुहु पिच्छुलैव चापि कफाविपन्ने नयनै भवन्ति इन द कफज अभिष्यन्त देयर वुड बी मोर ऑफ इचिंग एंड देयर कुड बी थिक सेक्रेशंस एंड द वेरी थिक सेक्रेशंस एज सच एंड हेवीनेस इन द आईज नॉट मच ऑफ अ पेन नाउ दिस इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट वी सी एज अ एलर्जिक कंजंक्टिवाइटिस from the clinical point of view allergic conjunctivitis is again categorized into seasonal allergic conjunctivitis perennial allergic conjunctivitis and vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis and giant papillary conjunctivitis based upon the clinical presentation of course the differences are mainly in the course of the disease seasonal allergic conjunctivitis is often due to the exposure to the um, dust or maybe the seasonally occurring uh, these um, uh, flowers or so on uh, environmental factors as such 
Perennial allergic conjunctivitis is often due to the other systemic allergic manifestation in a patient and uh, uh, the patient may have, also have the manifestation of the allergy elsewhere. Then vernal keratoconjunctivitis also is a consequence of the same perennial conjunctivitis where there could be more of uh, the keratin tissue damage and hence the sclerosis can occur. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis, of course, we have already referred to atopic keratoconjunctivitis, which is a consequence of the atopic disorder where there could be cicatrization of the palpebrae too. And then papillary conjunctivitis, there could be big follicles formed in the conjunctival area. From the clinical point of view, these differences are mainly from the academic point of view. From the clinical point of view, that these differences are not much important. It's all of them can be considered as allergic conjunctivitis. There, the primary presentation is itching, discharges, swelling, as such. And the other course may be slightly varying. In some it could be a shorter course. In some it can be seasonal. It can be persistent in some patients as such. And that's how it's seen. And that's exactly the Kapaja Abhishanda as such. Tamrashruta, Lohita Netrataja, Rajesh Samantha, Adi Lohita Ashta. That's again in case of the acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis often is produced due to again virus, but viruses belonging to the family of phycolovirus are the causative factors. And unlike that of the other adenovirus conjunctivitis, this doesn't occur as an epidemic, but often produced due to a direct contact with the person who had that uh, viral pathology. And uh, onset is a sudden onset, and there would be particular seen, reddish dots seen in the conjunctural area. Uh, the pain is comparatively lesser because the lesion is subconjunctive. But uh, it produces that abnormality in terms of that reddish discoloration and mild irritation, comparatively mild irritation, and usually results in five to seven days. Obesities and delayed complications are rare in such conditions, though it looks like quite troublesome in the beginning because of that sudden redness. Unlike that of the usual epidemic conjunctivitis, the discharges and the discomfort is much lesser in such uh, hemorrhagic conjunctivitis and it's also somewhat self-limiting. Rarely there could be coronal obesity, particularly if that hemorrhage occurs in the scleral area, it can result in the obesity. But during the episode, there could be a vision blurring as such due to the hemorrhages. Now, the prognosis is Vridhehi Edehi Abhishandehi Narana Makriyavatam Tavanta Stvajimantaha Sunayane Tivra Vedanaha. One of the major complications of these um, uh, Abhishandha is uh, it can produce the Adhimantha as such, which is a later complication as well as uh, the another of the disease, Sarvagata Roga as such. Now, uh, of course, we will continue with the Adhimanta in the next session. We will wind up today because of another commitment. So, uh, if there are any questions, we will try to answer and then wind up today. In the next session, we will continue with the Adhimanta and other Sarvagata Rogas. Okay, right. No questions.